Okay, so these multiple choice questions are about electrocyclic reactions and sigmatropic rearrangements. First one, starting off uh, fairly simple. What is the excited state HOMO of 1,3-butadiene? So um, the slow way to do this is to build up each one of the molecular orbitals by uh, thinking about how the p orbitals will line up. Uh, however, since it's multiple choice, you can probably take a bit of a shortcut and see that this one here has zero nodes. This one here has uh, one node. Um, this one here, C, has two nodes. And this one here has three nodes. Okay, so they're already listed in order of their energy levels. So really our energy diagram is going to look like this with, um, and we'd label it Psi1, Psi2, Psi3, and Psi4. And then we know that there's four p orbitals being put into the system um, to make up the system. So there's one electron in each p orbital, and so there's four pi electrons in total. So we're going to use one, two, three, four to fill the ground state um, of this molecule. So the HOMO in the ground state will be this one. But the question asks, but what is the HOMO in the excited state? So we get promotion of an electron through um, UV light. So the new excited state will look like this. Two there, one there, and one there. So the excited state HOMO, let's call it HOMO star, is going to be Psi 3, which corresponds to the third of these options, C. Okay, the second question is relates to the first one. We're talking about ring opening of a cyclobutene, and this is going to occur under um, UV light in this case. So it's going to be the excited state HOMO that we're interested in. And uh, I guess the reason why it's related to the previous question is we just looked at what is the HOMO of the excited state of a butadiene. And it's a butadiene cyclobutene or related through a reversible, reversible electrocyclic process. So that um, HOMO star, that excited state HOMO, looked like this. It had this okay it had two nodes and it had uh, the same phase at either end of that system so that's the um, excited state homo let's call it homo star again and uh, we are going to do um, a electro a cyclic ring opening that is going to be um, such that we get the right orbital symmetry to get us this HOMO star. So let's have a look at this um, cyclobutene. So we have to have the same phase in the middle there. Okay, and we're going to have a sigma orbital that's going to open up uh, like this. So there's the down methyl group, and here is the up methyl group. And uh, we need to make this rotate in such a way that we get to something that looks like the uh, HOMO. So we need to have the opposite uh, phase at those terminal uh, lobes that we, as we have in the middle two lobes of this um, pi system. Okay, so I think to do that, we're going to have to rotate like this around that bond. And we're going to have to uh, rotate like this uh, around that bond. And that's going to be overall a disrotatory process. Okay, so to get um, the two methyl groups which are opposite like this uh, to get those orbitals to overlap we're going to have to make them rotate in opposite directions so it's going to go that way and this is going to go that way 
Okay, so we follow that through, and we're going to end up with... that phase there, that phase there, and that phase there. And we've rotated in such a way that um, this methyl group ends up out that way. And uh, this other methyl group ends up pointing that way. So they're both in the same direction. So if we draw out that molecule again, it's going to have um, the two double bonds like this, uh, one of which has the methyl group in an E arrangement and the other one which has it in a Z arrangement like that. And that corresponds to compound B. And we said that we went through a disrotatory process to get to that. Okay, so that, that's uh, the answer to that question. It's a disrated free process to give compound B. Okay, just to double check that answer, um, we can check it with a model. So I've got a model here. I don't know if you can see that clearly on the camera, but I've made a model of the product um, butadiene with the Z double bond here and the E double bond over here. So if we're going to get a disrated free process, we're going to get one of those lobes going this way and one of those lobes going this way and we end up with the um, trans cyclobutene and then in the forward direction as it's drawn in that arrow if we want to go to the homo then we have to rotate one so that it goes out of phase with the neighboring orbital and the other so it goes out of phase with the other orbital there and we end up with the um, z e diene again so that's that's good just double check that it's correct. Okay, question three. We're back to molecular orbitals. This time for 135 hexatrain. We're looking at the ground state homo. So again, this is uh, fairly easy to do because we've drawn it out with zero nodes in the first, one node in B, two nodes in C, and three nodes in D. Okay, so they're already in the uh, order in which they would be energetically, so we're going to have energy diagram like this, where we have A, B, C, D, and of course we'd normally label them Psi 1, 2, 3, 4. And because it's a uh, hexatrain, we have six p orbitals, one contributes uh, each one contributes one electron uh, to the system, so we have six electrons in total. So there's two, there's two, and there's two. So it's the C uh, molecular orbital is going to be the HOMO. This one here. So let's take a note of that because it's relevant to the next question. We've got the same symmetry at either end of that pi system. Okay, so now that we've looked at what is the homo for the ground state of hexatriene, we're now going to put it into practice by looking at the thermal electrocyclization of a hexatriene. So let's draw out that molecular orbital um, diagram again, but on a more three-dimensionally oriented version of this molecule. So here's the p orbitals. And we had this arrangement where we have two in phase, the next two in phase with each other, and the next two in phase with each other. So we have two nodes. And to get those two end orbitals to overlap, we're going to have to do, once again, a disrotatory process. Before, with the, buta, uh, the cyclobutene, or the butadiene, it was um, only a four pi system, but we we're doing it under photochemical conditions, so that was also disrotatory. Now we're thermal, but with a 6 pi system, so it's going to be once again a disrotatory process. Uh, we've got a methyl group pointing here, and a methyl group pointing here. We'll draw in the hydrogen just to make it clear. And disrotatory means that we're going to have to get things to go in opposite directions. So one is going to go clockwise, the other one's going to go anti-clockwise. 
Okay, so if we follow those arrows, we're going to get um, the two methyl groups are pointing like this, and one is going to go up, and the other one's going to go down, and so we're going to get the trans product. Okay, so that will be. Let's try to draw out the orbitals for that. So that'll be, as I've drawn it, that'll be down. There's an in phase overlap of that um, sigma orbital. And then this methyl group will be up. Um, and then if we wanted to, we could draw in the rest of the orbitals around the system. This is overkill for a multi-choice question, but just showing you how it works. So we're going to get the trans product, which is A. Okay, and that's going to be via a disrotatory process. Okay, now we've got a sigmatrophic rearrangement. This one is part of the biosynthesis of vitamin D. Um, so overall, the trick here is that it's quite a large molecule and it's drawn in an unusual way. And we've drawn it so that you can't actually see uh, the explicit hydrogen after it's migrated. But hopefully what you can, what you can see is that um, these electrons here, uh, sorry, these uh, pi bonds have moved in the other compound. So it looks like we have moved that pair across to here and that pair across to there, and this pair across to here. Okay, and then what's the final one? It's going to be breaking the CH bond and moving the electrons there like that. Okay, so overall, that ends up in a product where we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the trick here is to recognize that, that carbon there is where the hydrogen ended up. Okay, that might not be obvious because it wasn't drawn in, but that's where the hydrogen ended up from this migration. So the breaking bond, sorry, the forming bond in the forward direction is there. The breaking bond is over here. And so there's just one atom on one side, and there's seven atoms on the other side uh, that form the ring making up the transition state for this process. So that must be a 1-7 uh, sigmatropic shift. Okay, finally, what is the name of this reaction and what's the major species at equilibrium? Well, the name, and this is really just something you have to memorize, you don't have to memorize name reactions for every course, but uh, it does make it very easy to talk to other people about the chemistry if you can just use a single word to describe the reaction. So an all carbon sigmatropic shift, which is a 3-3 three, three sigma, sigmatropic shift, is called a COPE rearrangement. Okay, if we draw the curly arrows in, there's how we work in the forward direction. Now here we've got a mono substituted double bond, just has this one um, substituent, this one non-hydrogen substituent. This is also a mono substituted double bond with just one uh, non-hydrogen substituent. Uh, whereas in the compound A, we've got um, a di substituted um, double bond and one uh, mono. So overall, the uh, compound A has um, more highly substituted alkenes overall, and the general rule is that more highly substituted double bonds are generally more stable. So this is going to be a cope rearrangement, which gives A as the major species at equilibrium.